you don't know this, you don't know your NASCAR. <laughs> That's easy. He started on the pole. He started Today. on the pole, yeah. Um, he's a third generation driver. Yeah. Famous racing family. His car's red. Dale Earnhardt Jr. His name ain't Bud, but his car is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Now, look at this. Folks, this is the telling tale right here. This is why the driver has so much to do with how he comes in and how he goes out. We talk about it all the time. Look at these times. These are in seconds. This is from the start-finish line coming around to come into the pits and then making your pit stop and coming back to the start-finish line. Look at the difference in the times. Dale Jarrett, who's leading the race, come in and a minute, uh, 104 seconds, .87. But look down here at Todd Bodine, who's up in the top five right now. He's at 103.42, so he got in and out better than anybody. And that's why he's up to fourth place. And that's why he's up in the running order. There we watched Dale Earnhardt Jr. did a good job of getting the pit road. They tried to set it up. They tried to wait. The pit road was clear. There was a guy there in the pit box blocking him in. I was, bragging, time. I was bragging on him of what a great job they were doing and keeping him out until the pit lane was clear. When he comes down the pit lane, there's a car two left down in front of him. The best laid plan. I just hate it. And that's when I'd be hollering my crew trees, too. Why did you bring me in? Why didn't you wait? Todd Bodine in the 66 car. That was a brand new car for here. And they did not. Here's we got the this is, shows the interval behind the leader right here on the Fox tracks. You see he's about 14, 15 seconds behind the leader. This is going through turn three and four right here. But they wind tunneled this car and the car showed good downforce numbers in the wind tunnel. And again, with only seven tests, sometimes that's how a car has to be determined to go to the racetrack by how it showed in the wind tunnel. Well, if it wind tunnel's good and they got chassis dynos to run the engines on now and the chassis dyno says the engine is good, then you come to the track and you've just got to fine tune your chassis and you should have a good race car. And the chassis dyno tells how much horsepower is at the rear wheel. Exactly. Leader in traffic, passing Bodine's teammate Jimmy Spencer, who got tangled up in the first caution flag of the day on lap four. This is starting to sound so easy and, and so simple that I think even me and Jeff might be able to go back out there and do it again. <laughs> hey, for fools. What do you think? Oh. <laughs> Here's second place Steve Park, and this is not April Fools. He's really running in second place. He's about 1.8 seconds behind the leader. Again, they made no adjustments on that race car, and I do not envy a crew chief's position here. Your car's a little loose. You know you want to tighten it up, tighten it up but you're so scared to tighten it up because you know the racetrack, especially with being overclass, is going to be tighter it's going to be tighter the car's going to turn less and less as the day goes on well that's where you got to listen to the driver i mean you really got to listen to what he's telling you look at the lap times and make decisions based on what the driver's telling you believe it or not i mean i know you crew chiefs sometimes don't do that but that's what you should do <laughs> and my redheaded wife stephanie was sitting over here when i said something about driving a car again and i thought she's going to jump down here on top of me Now here's the leader between Jarrett and Park in real time as they go past the condominiums in turn two. Fairly constant. Staying about two and a half seconds. Jarrett now, and what's going to happen, Dale Jarrett, you see all this traffic he's in right there. That's yeah, going right to let Steve Park really close it up. I believe, I know Jarrett's car is good on the longer run, but I, I believe Steve Park is an equal to Jarrett if he could get up there to him. Mark's had a funny day. He hasn't much had to race anybody. He's had a lot of clear air right in front of him as you see him close in. In one lap, back to turn two, halfway down the back stretch, he's closed up three quarters of a second. But I stress Dale Jarrett, he's got about four or five cars there. He's trying to work down to 1.2 seconds here in the middle of three and four. You can see how he's closing up. Well, if, you know, once Jarrett gets through this crowd, then Park's got to get through it too. So it'll be, the difference is going to be who can get through there the best. And Jarrett's getting through there right now, and Park's catching up to the back of them right here. Now, he's got to work those cars, but they are getting spread out a little bit. But now, Darrell, you'll fight the leader to keep from going a lap down, but will you fight that second-place car as hard? Well, theoretically, you shouldn't. Once you go a lap down, keep the leader in sight. If you got a chance to get a lap back, you're going to work real hard. If not, let that second-place guy get up there and race. And here you see Steve Park. He's pulled right up on the back of the 99 of Jeff Burton that Dale Jarrett had to fight a minute ago. Jeff Burton, he's moving over a little bit, letting Steve Park go on. Again, the leader's done yardage. Why fight somebody else? And now Jarrett 
with a little bit of clear field in front of him opens up a little bit of a lead again. But as you can see, they're now they're they're both in the screen now. And a while ago, we couldn't see Park, so he made a lot of gains on uh, Jarrett right there. And it's all about where you catch guys. I mean, if you catch uh, cars in the corners, well, obviously you got to slow down. You catch them on the straightaways, they'll move over and let you go. And Dale Jarrett has done caught a pack of another five race cars. That's going to allow Steve Park to even close more. Terry Labonte right behind Rusty Wallace. Up to 15th place, just ahead of Mark Martin. Started 42nd. I talked to those guys this morning. They was not happy in happy hour, not happy at all. In fact, they thought they had a motor problem, changed the motor because they thought it was leaking, and it was actually the transmission seal leaking. There was nothing wrong with the motor. Lost a lot of track time, throwed four springs, a few shots at that car. Looks like it's working out here. He's on the lead lap, and again, running in 15th position. Well, having won this race and not really having a lot of changes here, I know the tires are a little different, but I'd be putting that setup that I won with here the last time, and uh, I'd be pretty happy with that, I believe. Maybe not a home field advantage today for Terry Labonte. Next week, we go to the Wood Brothers home track, Martinsville, Virginia. Just a short ride over the mountains from Stewart. They are south of Roanoke, between Roanoke and Greensboro, actually. Beautiful racetrack in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains and slam bang short track action once again. And I, and I love short track racing. It's all about driver. It's not about aerodynamics. It's not about all that downforce. It's all about finesse and driving that race car and getting it down in that corner and getting back in the throttle. It's one of the few places you slow down, you run a lot faster. You got that right. You have to slow down, you wear your brakes out. Big, big track for hard on brakes. Here comes Park. He's caught the leader, and he wants the lead. Classic Ford Chevrolet battle here. Well, it took Dale Jarrett a while to work uh, past Ken Schrader and put Schrader a lap down, and Park capitalized. And don't count to... Junior out either. He's right here lurking right behind these two cats. So uh, both the EI cars are running pretty good. This look looking out the back of Tony Stewart's car. He's in 18th position and he's one of those guys that's going to try to fight and stay on the lead lap. Mike Skinner in the 31 car. He's coming to pit road for an unscheduled stop. Well, looking at these tires, he's been into something. Look at all the letters rubbed off of him. He's got up against somebody. Yeah, there's damage down the right side of that car just uh, behind the door. Now, the rear tire changer on this car, it's Clint Pittman from the number 21 Bush Grand National car that Mike drove yesterday. Sam Tubbs, who's a fabricator for the 29 car, who normally changes rear tires, was in a bad wreck Friday night. Went to the hospital, but he's home, and we wish him well. Look forward to seeing him back, hopefully, at Martinsville. How do you know so much about all those guys? I go in that garage. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me because you used to work for them. I went in there in the dark this morning. <laughs> it was dark early this morning. My wife told me that. Good bit of damage to the right side of Mike Skinner's car, and he falls off the lead lap with that unscheduled pit stop. Here's the distance of the lead. Looking back from Dale Jarrett back to Steve Park. And it's 85 consecutive green flag laps. That's not unusual for Texas. The only time we have a problem here is on the start. Once we get racing here and get the groove moved up, we seem to be able to just run the whole race without any cautions. So Jarrett with just several car lengths on Steve Park with Dale Earnhardt Jr., the pole center third, Jeff Gordon, and Todd Bodine, the top five here in Texas. What's going on? Hey. Wow, this is nice. But I thought Stacy said if you bought new tools, she gets a new dining room set. Yeah, she did. So where are the table and chairs? You're standing on them. <laughs> Fine woodworking tools from Rigid. Name proven by pros since 1923. Take our innovative oscillating sander that converts from a spindle to belt sander in seconds. Rigid. Buy them at the Home Depot. First in home improvement. My heroes don't catch touchdowns. They don't slam dunk. They don't hit home runs. They don't score goals. They don't give smackdowns. My heroes burn rubber. They fight steel. They bleed octane. They risk their life in every turn, on every track, in every 
every race. My heroes race cars. Fast cars. That girl? One at the register? She takes me. Mm -hmm. No, check it out. She gave me this frozen coke for free. A Whopper says free food tastes a lot like love. Buy a Whopper and get your choice. Cheese and bacon topping, Hershey pie, or frozen coke. Free. You do know you're a moron, right? In the land of burgers, the flame-boiled Whopper is king. Grand Prix driver. Pontiac Grand Prix with wide track handling. Its wheels are set wide for better control and grip in the curves. Wider is better. Now, during the Pontiac's 75th anniversary, lease a new wide track Grand Prix for as low as $277 a month. See your Pontiac dealer today. NASCAR Winston Cup Racing, presented by the Home Depot, is brought to you by MBNA, issuer of the official NASCAR credit card. Log on, MBNA.com. Welcome back to the Texas Motor Speedway with Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers, and the Hollywood Hotel. You know, when Dale Jarrett won at Darlington and edged out Steve Park for that victory, Jeff, he said if it had gone on a few miles longer, Steve Park would have won the race. He had the better car. Does it look like that today? It appears to right now. Uh, so far, I see Steve Park getting stronger and stronger. I look for maybe those guys to make a few more adjustments before long and be right back there. And it may be settled once again, like at Darlington, in the pits. For Jarrett, this is the same car that he took to Atlanta when he won the pole and finished fourth, the same car that he used to win at Darlington. So it's the third race in the history of this car, which was built during the winter months. And he said, coming in, this is one of those tracks where you absolutely have to have a good engine to do well. The emphasis is on power. Well, obviously right now, the 88 car has got a strong piece in his car. But also the guys at DEI have got a lot of good power, too. They're probably the strongest General Motors car out there today. Got early wins, sitting on poles. They got a lot of power, and they can get the job done, too. But I really look for the DEI guys to make that one little final adjustment because I think Steve Park feels like Dale Jarrett owes him one. Three DEI cars starting in the top ten. Just two cautions for nine laps. We've had three leaders and four lead changes. Let's go back upstairs, Mike. And two unscheduled pit stops, Andy Houston and Mike Skinner has come back in. Mike Skinner, we got the, the fact a while ago that he actually went up and scraped the wall with the right side. They've come back to pit road to try to set the toe out. There you see they've got a, what they're doing, they're adjusting this guy right here. He's adjusting the tie rod underneath there. You run about an eighth inch of toe out. That's the distance between the front of the front wheels and the rear of the front wheels. And he's hit the wall. You can see the stripes yeah. here. He's hit the wall and knocked the toe out out. He's hit it twice because before that number wasn't yeah. all ruffled up. Just I a little just, bit of the lettering. I could just see the tires were scuffed up the last uh, first time in, but now he's got the body damage too. That's Royce McGee talking on the radio. And what he did, he went underneath, loosened the tie rod, and adjusted the tie rod that controls the toe out. And they got a string they're running down through there. And folks, the tallest buildings in the world okay. are built okay. off the of screen, so that'll work right for them. What he's saying, he adjusted the tie rod about a turn and a half to get the toe out back in, back right. And you can't drive one of these things when they get the toe messed up in them because it, it, the, you're going 190 miles an hour, and if you get any part of the suspension messed up, then you can't drive these things. Well, Dale Jarrett has opened up a little bit of a lead now on Steve Park. Two lap cars separate the two leaders. There's Jarrett pulling down on Mark Martin to try to put the 15th place car a lap down. Back behind them, Jeff Gordon and Todd Bodine and Ricky Rudd, Bobby Labonte, Johnny Benson and Sterling Marlin, Elliot Sadler. Here comes the Gordon and Bodine right there. They've been having to go at. They've swapped that position about four or five times in the last 10, 12 laps. Good run for Todd and only his second Winston Cup start. And there is caution on the speedway for the third time today. Big break for Kurt Bush. He's going to get a lap back. Here comes uh, Mike Wallace got a lap back, and Stoney Stewart was trying to, but didn't quite make it. There's debris at the start finish line, a piece of metal. So rather than have that cut a tire and cause a bigger problem, the caution has come out here for the third time. Tough break for Andy Houston who had made an unscheduled pit stop under green about 10 laps ago. Oh, Pierre has reared his ugly head. Pierre Debris? Pierre Debris. I'm sure you've heard of me. <laughs> I'm very famous in racing. Well, 
little bit there to be picked up as well. That debris, that's just that's just yeah. off the tires. That's just tire rubber. But that is what will get up on a header pipe up inside the car there and cause the car to smoke or the car cause you to think there might be something wrong with the car. You pick that up on these hot tires and throw it up in the engine bay and it falls down in the headers and.